Yes, it is that time. It is Mario Kart time. This time though, Yoshi's gonna show us what he's got. I think Mario's had enough air time on this channel. We'll give this little dinosaur a chance. And I think he's actually one of the more popular characters aside from obviously Mario, Luigi. Yoshi or Yoshi, I think he's one of the more lovable ones. Now I'm not up on my Mario trivia too much, but I think, I think it was mid nineties that he came along. I do know someone who will know. Alexa, when did Yoshi first appear on Mario? Yoshi first appeared in Super Mario World in 1990 as Mario's trusty dinosaur companion. 1990. So this is one of the many Mario Karts you can get from Carrera. This one is the smaller version of the more common ones that get converted. There's loads of videos of people converting these. I converted this one to brushless three, maybe four years ago. Because it's so much smaller, trying to get a different motor and stuff in there. When I take this apart, you'll see the size of the motor. Trying to get this thing to like brushless or upgrade it to anything substantial, it's gonna be a pain. Loads of room in this one. You've got the side pods for electronics. This one already came out of the box with proportional steering, so it was easier to convert. It also came with an open diff. Much, much easier to convert. And that's why Yoshi is getting jet power. I know EDF fans aren't strictly jets, but you know what I mean. Right, before we start pulling it apart, let's just quickly plug it in. I've already charged the battery. It comes with a little 3.2 volt single cell LIFO or whatever it is. Also supply you a couple of AAA batteries for your controller. The only, I think the difficult bit for this is to get proportional steering on it. Might need a little bit of thought. Now the good news is there's quite a bit of room in that battery tray under there. So we should be all right for trimming that up for the battery I'm gonna use for this full conversion. All right, let's switch you on. Non-portional steering means that when you turn, it just goes all the way one way, all the way the other. There's no variation in it. So we're gonna change that. And then <laughs> that is full throttle. In the past, I've done little speed runs just to get the speed, but this is gonna be exactly what it says in the box, probably like, well, actually, I don't think it's gonna be five mile an hour. That's what it says on the box, five mile an hour. 5.6 mile an hour. That's like a slow jog. I'm not sure that's true. No, that is not 5.6 mile an hour. <laughs> Probably good fun for a little kid though. Anyway, let's get right to it. Let's go. Oh no, he doesn't say that, does he? I don't think. <laughs> Managed to get some satellites indoors. Oh, four mile an hour, faster than I thought. So first thing to do is get this thing pulled apart so I know what I'm working with. And the first thing I'm gonna do is get the steering sorted and get a proper servo in there, because that's gonna be the difficult bit. I've already got the EDF fan bit sorted, so the steering is gonna be the difficult bit. Come on, dude, don't make it hard for me. Right, so that's what we're working with. Uh, we've got a little bit of space there, that's good. I've got a little micro um, servo that are going there. So we've got a little bit of space to work with around the front. Uh, this is how non-proportional stuff works. It's just a little motor and a gear, so it's not very good. And interestingly, the motor and gearbox is actually that back bit there. That's that's quite interesting. And actually, it's probably good news because I'm thinking, because I'm going with EDF fans, I've got no brakes. And with the motor connected like that, it'd be too much restriction on the, well, I can't even turn them like that. So I'm going to have to remove the motor so that we free up the uh, rear axle. But it does give me the option for maybe getting something in there, like a little servo to push onto there to act as, well, some brakes for it. That is good news. Right, let's get all this gubbins out. We don't need any of the electronics. So get rid of that board, get rid of the steering, get that servo over, line it up and see what we can do. So this is the smallest servo I've got. Nice little one there. Is it gonna sit a similar height? Or a bit, probably a bit higher than that motor is gonna sit. So with a little bit of cutting and shutting, we've got something that resembles 
some form of steering. Ideally, I could have done with a smaller servo. I've put a different one into what I showed you just a minute ago. The splines are a bit weird on the other one, so I can get a servo horn on it. I will neaten all that up. I've just kind of rough cut it to get it in there. I'm going to have to trim this bit to go on top. And I think as long as I'm careful, when I trim it, I've got it fixed there, but it should just rest on there and that'll give it some support. It's in my hair of melted green plastic right that's probably the most difficult bit done so i'm gonna trim this up so i can get that fitted on and then it's the exciting bit the edf fans two fans so in the end i had to actually just chop the whole top off it was sat a lot it sat a lot higher than i thought however the springiness of that i've just clipped it back in there and it holds the top of the servo and kind of supports it. So what I might do is I might just paint the servo silver or I might put a little bit of tape around there. But I think when everything's in there and the steering wheel's in there, you'll hardly see it anyway. So that's actually neater than I thought. And the servo lead neatly wraps around there as well. So this is probably going to be one of my neater builds. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to remove this motor should just pull out. I think I'm going to remove the motor so that the gearbox is freewheeling. I might just need to yeet that pinion off. And then that should be coming out. There we go. So now no resistance there, which means it's going to push it along nicely. And I think, like I said, I'm going to try and fiddle about and make something that's going to act as a brake. There's actually space in there as well. I need to find somewhere for the electronics. So have a think about that. I might be able to do something with that, you know. That looks hollow, that exhaust. Um, I'll show you the, the ESCs I'm using. These ones are used or designed for EDF fans. They're quite small. I reckon we could get both of them in that exhaust. Oh, that'd be so cool. If we could get them in the exhaust and then the wires coming out the exhaust, yes, I'm gonna try that. So, so I've decided I'm not gonna use this as a brake. I've taken all the gears out apart from the one in the bottom. It's the perfect place for the little receiver I've got. It's a little R4F radio link there. That's gonna tuck up in there. That will then go on like that. Both ESCs in the exhaust. I did take a little bit of work because these weren't exactly hollow. Loads of random holes in there. I realized tucking both ESCs together might get a little bit warm in there. So I've got some holes there. That's gonna sit back there. Fans are gonna be blowing on it, so hopefully that will cool them down. I will neaten it up. It looks a little bit rough. I don't know whether to paint it black, actually. I'm not sure. I might leave it like that. But anyway, all in. I'm going to have a little bit of a tidy up of the bench. And then this thing is ready for the fans. This is definitely not going to look quite as stock as the other builds I've done. But, but considering the amount of space I had to do it all, I think it's all right. So EDF fans. So EDF fans, electric ducted fan. That's what it is. 7,000 kV brushless motor there. I think they're 36 mil. Now I've got a 3D printer. I haven't got any software to design stuff, but I got a friend that knows his way around CAD quite well. And he's made me these little mounts, little clamp on the bottom. And they literally just clamp on there, one each side. The fan is just a push fit. Slots in like that. Don't need to fix it in any other way. I mean, it's pushing back that way anyway, so it's not going to come out. Fan sits in there. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's how it works. This is probably the coolest one I've ever done. I'm quite proud of my creation. He looks ready to go. I also, even though it's a bit messy at the back, I kind of like it. It's got that sort of back to the future look, isn't it? That could quite easily be a flux capacitor. Anyway, I'm sure you want to see it going. Um, so the ESCs, you have to program them. So I programmed them both before I put them in. To calibrate it, you hold full throttle, then you switch it on and then it beeps and stuff. And well, it's ready to go. Uh, the only thing I haven't got at the moment is a brake. I'm going to put a brake on it before we go outside. I've got a little servo. I'm going to try and get it in there. And then I'm going to make a little mechanism that goes onto the wheel. Um, so it slows it down, but I'll do that before we take it outside in the wild. Little 900 milliamp hour two cell lipo in this from an FMS. So I've set up the end stops. So that's the amount of steering we've got. Not loads. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> so the limiting factor is definitely going to be that little battery on this. <laughs> 900 milliamp hour to push two 7,000 kV um, EDF fans is probably not quite as much as it needs, but <laughs> oh man, this thing's so cool. <laughs> Let's give him a little full throttle launch. Ready? Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> brakes. The thing with something like this, with these EDF fans, we need a bit of space so it can build up speed. I think he's gonna be pretty quick. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I wanna try and get a 3S LiPo in there, but we might have to take him out of the driver's seat and just strap it to the driver's seat. Ah. <laughs> Yes, I love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> this is definitely one of the coolest projects I've done for a long time. So nice high tech break on the back there. All I've done is I've used an old ESC mounting plate, put a servo on there, cut a wheel up, put some tie around it just to kind of camouflage it a bit. And I've got it set up to an AUX channel. So when I hit reverse on the throttle, just touches the tyre, adjusted the end points so it uh, yeah, just touch it, slows it down. And then obviously normal forward on the throttle and then reverse is just that. EDF fans don't go backwards. Anyway, just a quick shake down. As you can see, it's pretty cold. Uh, tiny little battery in it. All right, let's get it going straight first. We're definitely gonna try a bigger 2S battery and then a 3S. Oh, actually, it's not bad. Ah. <laughs> Need to sort the trim out. Once it gets up to speed, it's not bad. I mean, we've only got four mile an hour to beat, haven't we, I think? So here we go. That's full trigger. Come on. Ah. Whoa. That's actually harder to control than I first imagined. It's not going to be easy on 3S, is it? Right. 16 mile an hour. That's four times as fast. Oh. <laughs> we do this run and I'm going to adjust the fans so they're pushing down a little bit more because maybe it's going light when it's up to full throttle. Oh, I think the battery's at it now. Well, at least my brake works. 17, nice. Right, put a fresh battery in. Fans pointing slightly down now might push it into the ground more and stop it sliding out at full throttle. Here we go. Come on, Yoshi. <laughs> it looks so cool. I think that's worked. May have scrubbed a bit of speed by doing that, but didn't seem to want to slide out at full throttle that time. <laughs> Come on, 20 mile an hour, please. Oh, 19. Before we do any more testing or speed runs, we we'll do a little bit of science. Science, maybe not science, but anyway, I've got this thing. It's a anim, animometer. It's basically for like wind speed. So we're gonna get this like mounted up here. I'm gonna put this just behind and it'll tell us how fast the air is coming out behind it. Then I'm gonna try it with a slightly better 2S LiPo and then we're gonna try it with a 3S LiPo. I'm interested to see how much performance this is losing with that tiny little battery. So little stock 900 milliamp hour battery first. Not really played about with this yet. Right, that's, I'm gonna hold it on 11, no, on five there. Let me focus my phone. Thirty-seven point nine mile an hour coming out the back of there. Wow! Try the other side. So, if friction, if drag and gravity and everything wasn't a factor, this thing would do over thirty mile an hour. So we need to be on the five, which is there, slightly tilted down, like the last time. I saw thirty-seven point four then which tells me they're both getting about the same, which is good, 37 mile an hour. So I just done it really close, because obviously back here I said, oh, if it was no, you know, no drag and stuff, it'd do 30 mile an hour. Actually, the speed coming out the back, if I put it as close as possible, yeah. 
That's <laughs> 61 and a half mile an hour. That's over 60 mile an hour. And there's two of them. And if I was a good YouTuber, I'd add both them speeds up and put it in the title. 120 mile an hour Mario Kart. Hmm, I wonder what the speed's gonna be on 3S. Right, so this is a slightly better battery now. Not a massive battery, because I want, if it is better, I want to be able to fit it, so. <laughs> right, same place. Ah, a little bit slower with that battery. Well, at least it tells me that that battery's doing an okay job. If I go any bigger than that, then I'm not gonna be able to fit it in there and it's just gonna look silly with a huge battery on it. The whole purpose of this is to make it usable, 3S. Not the best 3S LiPo, but again, it needs something compact. Let's see what this is. Uh-oh. Uh oh, oh, don't kill it. Oh, one of them's not working. No, no. Right, they're both working again. Right, I'm gonna do like one last test, putting it really close. I wasn't really looking at that. It was 40 something, wasn't it? Let's see what we can max out before it dies. <laughs> it went past it. I think this gets to 60 odd mile an hour. So I'm gonna throw a 3S and speed run it in a minute, but <laughs> I just wanna give it a go over here. My brake broke off, but I've changed it now. Much neater. Also dialed the steering in. There was too much play in that little servo, so <laughs> I've, uh, I've tightened it up, put some foam in there. That should help on a 3S run. Oh, this is so cool. Come on! <laughs> so noisy. Let's get a run up at that ramp. I'm not gonna jump it, I wanna see how far up I can get. Oh, he's gonna get to the top, easy. I just don't wanna break it. bit windy and it's a bit cold looking a bit more streamlined now so I mean let's be honest Yoshi's probably got the same drag coefficient as me so this might go a little bit better it was cutting out on the workbench um, under full load so I'm hoping once it gets going it won't do that but I just don't know whether we're gonna get a full pass on three we'll see what we can do steering still not great but Full throttle, ah! <laughs> Saved it, saved it from going off. Ah! Don't think it's gonna happen. No, that's, we've matched the 2S speed. Yes, no! <laughs> that was full for a little bit. Didn't get up to speed though. Every failed pass is losing us some volts though, isn't it? 24, at least we beat 2S. Seems to have a bit of resistance on it now. Yeah, that rear end that's stiffened right up. I wonder if something's come dislodged or we've bent something in there, I don't know. Just doesn't want to go now. Yeah, one of the motors has had enough as well, I think. Yeah. Oh well. So although it didn't end as well as I wanted it to on 3S, this thing is still crazy. 24 mile an hour, that's six times the speed it was straight out of the box. And I think this has definitely been my most fun and probably my most complex build so far. These things are gonna come in useful for another build I got next year. As for the next Mario Kart build, well, I've got something already. It won't be till next year and it's not Mario Kart but I don't wanna say any more really, cause I don't want anyone to copy me. All I'm gonna say is, cowabunga. Bunga.